working on a traction engine which is similar to a Mini, part 5. Having a look in the steam chest and trimming the existing gasket, removing the plate on top of the cylinder to see what is inside, followed by examining the steering chains which need replacing, and removing the paint from a commercial water gauge. I've been test running this engine using compressed air for quite a while, and I noticed a bad air leak from around the steam chest. It's time, I think, to investigate further. In my opinion, there are not enough studs around the steam chest cover to hold it securely in place. I'm not really complaining, though, because there are only four nuts to remove. Everything on this small traction engine is extremely small, and you can see by the size of my fingers how small these nuts are, and I'm really trying hard not to drop any nuts on the floor. The steam chest cover plate comes away quite easily, and I can immediately see what the problem is. It's the gasket on the steam chest cover. For the moment, though, I'm happy to look inside, and as you can see, there's a slide valve with a driving bar. Everything looks OK. I notice some of the gasket material just inside the steam chest, and when I look at the inside of the cover plate, the gasket is terrible. I do not think the person who built this engine fitted this gasket because it really comes under the heading of diabolical gasket fitting. Here I'm using a Stanley knife to trim the gasket to the correct shape and make a tidy job of it, without leaving any raggy bits around the edge. Once I trim the gasket to shape, I use my small blowtorch to burn off any raggy edges on the part that I cut. And although I shouldn't need to do this, I'm cleaning up the gasket and making it flat using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. Now the gasket is a lot better, it's the correct shape to fit the steam chest, so now I can bolt it back in place. This is a very good shot of the existing arrangement for the steering chains. Two things wrong here. One is the links are opening up because they are not welded or silver soldered together. And the other problem is they've been fitted incorrectly, the chains do not cross over each other. I will rectify this near the end of the episode. One job at a time. Here I'm re-tightening the nuts that hold the steam chest cover to the steam chest. Being very careful to avoid shearing off the studs. The nuts need to be tight, but not too tight. If you're doing a job like this with such small fittings, do be very careful. That's one little job out of the way. The steam chest cover should be okay. I don't think it's going to leak. I'm going to give the engine a test run, but there's a noise in the background which is the sound of my ultrasonic cleaner, because at the time I was cleaning the wheels whilst I was making this video. I'm pleased to say that the steam chest leak has now gone. I can't feel any blowing when I put my hand near it. And here I'm using my small blowtorch, because previously when I did this, the leak blew out the flame. But it's not doing now, so everything's fine. I'm using the blowtorch to check around the general area, and I cannot detect any kind of leak from any part of the cylinder block. The next job is to address the chain problem. I'm going to have to take these chains off completely because they're utterly wrong for the job. Traction engine steering chains need to be closed links, not open like these. This is a very small traction engine and the chains are held in place to the spud pan at the front with just one 8BA bolt. I do all the camera work at the same time as I do the job. I don't have three cameramen with me, like James May has in his disassembler program. There were some spiky bits of soft solder sticking out of the bracket where the shaft goes through to the worm drive for the steering. I heated the part up and wiped away the solder. There was nothing really to video about fitting the new steering chain. I will show it though at the end of the video. All I got was the back of my hands every time the camera was on. What I'm doing here is removing the top cover from the cylinder to see what's inside. I think the big lump in the middle is some sort of lubricator. I'll be able to verify this once I remove the cover completely. When I removed the cover plate and looked at the block, I could see that there was a hole drilled at an angle to let oil through to the steam chest. The regulator on this engine is just a screw thread, and I don't know what the hole is over the top of this. There is no way through to anywhere from this hole in the block. There are three holes in the cover, two are for the safety valves, and one is for the lubricator to the cylinder. Here I'm screwing the regulator in and out to see what happens, and nothing happens. So if any expert viewers know what this hole is over the thread from the regulator, I'd like to know. 
Before reassembling this part, I'm applying some steam oil, and then before refitting the cover plate, I wiped away every trace of the oil. I decided to smear some Loctite 542 on the plate before I screwed it back in position. Please be aware though, I'm not putting any Loctite 542 on the threads of these small bolts. These really are very tiny, and what made the job easier was the use of a nut spinner that fitted them perfectly. If you don't have any nut spinners in your workshop, I recommend that you go out and buy some. They are really useful. That's the cover plate back in position. All I need to do now is fit the safety valves, one of which is modified to be an inlet for the compressed air. This filler cap is very fiddly. I would think it should really have a screw slot in the top. Eventually I removed it, filled it with oil and then replaced it. But there's no way of tightening it up other than using a pair of pliers which I'm not happy about. The overall appearance of just about everything on this traction engine is pretty good. It's just unfortunate that a lot of the materials used are the wrong ones for the application. And throughout the job soft sold has been used and really the boiler is a bit of a disaster being soft soldered together. Finally, here is the steering chain that I fitted. As you can see, it has closed links that are all either silver soldered or welded. It's held in place right at the front with a single 8BA bolt, and I could not get this to work at all until I put a nut behind it, and I could assemble the chain before fitting it. This simple job took over an hour to complete, and it drove me mad. I had to do it in two stages. But now the steering mechanism actually does what it's supposed to do, it turns the wheels as you turn the steering wheel, without the big time lag that it had before. Other than the wheels, no parts of this traction engine are painted, and I wanted to fit a commercial water gauge that was painted, but not for long I put it in a pot of acetone and the paint fell off. And that is it for this episode, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.